thought I had a short message today, and I think that's okay, because we've truly already had worship in here this morning. Good to see everyone here, a lot of people out, and I see somebody fanning. Jeremy, don't you let us get hot again, okay? You keep it cold so they'll stay awake. I want them awake today. Some of y'all fell asleep last week, so. I appreciate you getting out and, uh, and being here today on this uh, cold, uh, rainy morning. Um, a lot of folks not here today, and we miss them, but I'm glad that you're here today, and I don't know what path that, that you took to get here today, but it was a year or so ago that, that Nate and Hope caught me out here in the parking lot one day, and they said, how do y'all do that? I said, what do you mean? Is How do y'all get here ahead of us? I said, what are you talking about? We just drove here, and he said, no, we drove by your house, and y'all were just walking out the door. You weren't even in your car, and we get here, and you're already at the church. You didn't pass us anywhere. And he said, even, even weirder, sometimes we drive by and y'all aren't even outside. Your cars are there and we get here and your car's in the parking lot and y'all are already in the building. So we started talking and, and we realized that he goes down, get well. There's a lot of red lights down through there, to, all the way to Star Landing. I go over and come down to Tullahoma. Our, our homes, our subdivision is, is between the two. And I just come down to Tullahoma to church and over and down. And apparently that way is, is faster. So I would get here. So two... Uh, Two different roads going to the, the same location. You know, a lot of places that we may travel to is that way. There's a lot of different ways to, to get somewhere, amen? A couple of years ago, I took a trip with the police department, and, you know, sometimes we have to entertain ourselves, and somehow we showed up with two different GPSs, two different brands. So we said, you know what, let's plug them both in. So we had a Garmin on one side and, and a Tom Tom on the other. They're both going, and we're headed to Atlanta. And it was kind of hilarious because they could not agree on anything. They had, I mean, just constantly. One was saying, continue on this road for 20 miles, and the other one would be over there at the same time. Make a U-turn as soon as possible. They didn't agree on how to get to the destination. Folks, there's a lot of people in our world today that have that same problem. They can't agree on how to get to the destination called heaven. There are so many people in our world today that have different ideas on how to get there. There's even people in our world today that, that want you to think, and, and maybe you're one of those today, and, and I hope by the time we leave here that, that God has changed your heart, but there are people today that want you to believe that there are more than one way, there is more than one way to heaven. I think one of the things that shapes so much of the worldview and, and people's ideas and, and, and concepts today is this idea of inclusiveness. This idea that, that nothing's wrong, everything that's done out there is okay because we don't want to offend anybody today. Well, I want to just go ahead and start with I love every one of you today, and because I love you so much, I'm willing to offend you today if that's your belief. If you believe that there's more than one way to heaven today, I'm going to offend you. If you believe that wrong is right and right is wrong, I'm going to offend you today. But I love you, so I'm willing to share that with you today. It's so sad today that there are people that have been put in places of, of power and, and, and great prosperity and, and, and in places to, uh, of great influence and have had the opportunity to share the truth about that and have missed the concept. And I'm going to show you just a, just a court, short video. I'm not here to bash anybody or, or, or talk about anybody. So I'm here to tell you the truth today, but I want to show you a short video of a, of a TV evangelist who was on Larry King Live who had the, the opportunity to tell the truth and miss that chance. We're just going to play just a short version of it, short por portion yeah, of it. We've had ministers on who said, your record don't count. You either believe in Christ or you don't. If you believe in Christ, you are, you are going to heaven, and if you don't, no matter what you've done in your life, yeah. you ain't. Yeah, it's, I don't know, it's, there's probably a, a balance between, I believe you have to know Christ, but I think that if you know Christ, if you're a believer in God, you're going to have some good works. And I think it's a cop-out to say, well, I'm a Christian, but I don't ever do anything to help What if you're Jewish or Muslim and you don't accept Christ at all? You know, I, I just, I'm very careful about saying who and would and wouldn't go to heaven. I don't know. I think only because God. you believe you have to believe in Christ. I so believe. They're, they're wrong, aren't they? Well, I don't know if I believe they're wrong. I believe here's what the Bible teaches, and from the Christian faith, this is what I believe. But I... He missed a golden opportunity 
And when he said, I'm just going to pick out one thing there. He said, I don't know if I believe that they're wrong. Well, let me go ahead and clarify that for you. If you've seen that before and you're still confused, those people are wrong. People that believe they can get to heaven through any other means other than Jesus Christ and a relationship with him and making him Lord of your life, they're wrong. Those who teach that are leading people to to a place that's called hell. Hell is just as real as heaven, and if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, that's where you're going to end up one day. There's only one way to heaven, and that's Jesus. One way. Now, he said on there that, that they, Larry King said that they've had other preachers on there that, that said that if you know Jesus and, and Jesus is your Lord and Savior, then, then you're going to go to heaven. Well, praise God for those men that weren't ashamed to stand up and, and to tell the truth with a national audience or, or what could be a worldwide audience. They stood up and they told the truth. Praise God for them. I, I, I don't know who those other men were, but can you imagine if they were to put Billy Graham on there and ask Billy Graham that question? Ooh, it would have been something totally different than what we just got. And again, I, I don't know. I haven't watched him. I don't know that much about Joe Olstein. I pray for Joe Olstein. He's in a place of, of lots of influence, and God could use him in a mighty way. Maybe he's changed since then. I don't know. But I know that day he missed the mark, and he missed an opportunity to share the truth with people and to tell people there's only, and I'm going to say it several times, there's only one way, one way that a person goes to heaven, and that is Jesus Christ. Now, don't, don't get to thinking today that he's the only one either. Now, some of you ladies I know, especially are, are housewi housewives, or, or maybe you've got a job and, and you record it. I'm fixing to step on your toes real hard now. Maybe some of y'all have heard about this, this video I'm fixing to show, but you haven't taken the time to see it. And I'm like you. Sometimes I like to see things with my own eyes. Put the next video on, and we're just going to watch a, a part of it for, for time's sake. A panel has been discussing the spirituality and the forces of God, but I also believe that there are two forces that are here with us, that we do have our, our, our God that we can depend on, but there's also a power of darkness that we do need to be aware of. And, and that's you, where the choice is. Do you believe that, and that you can choose between one or the other? Most most absolute definitely. Yes. Now, yes. now Marianne uh, Williams says in her book, Return to Love, that we're always walking in the direction of one or the other. That all of your actions in life, either you're moving toward the darkness or you're moving toward the light. Right. She calls it fear and love. There's this wonderful book called Ishmael by Daniel Quinn, which talks it, which, which is, anyway, it's a gorilla talking, but anyway. <laughs> uh, it talks about one of the points it brings out is one of the mistakes that human beings make is believing that there is only one way to live That's and right. that we don't accept that there are diverse ways of being in the world that there are millions of ways to be a then human how do you being please and, God? and many ways no but many paths many to what you call God that and her crazy. path might be something else and when she gets there she might call it the light but her loving and her kindness and her generosity brings her if it brings her to the same point that it brings you it doesn't matter whether she called it God along the way or not and I guess the danger that could be in that I mean it's, it sounds great on the onset but if you really look at both sides I there could couldn't possibly be just one way what what about Jesus what about Jesus and you say there isn't only one way. There is one way and only one way, and there that is through Jesus. Jesus. There couldn't possibly be with because a million people there in the world. Isn't. There couldn't possibly be. Because you say, you intellectualize it and say there isn't. If no. you don't believe that, you're all buying into the lie. Ooh, praise God, that woman was sitting in the audience. Because there is no doubt in my mind there were people all over the world sitting at home and they were steadily sliding over. Sliding over. Maybe she's right. Maybe there's, maybe there's something, something to that. She said something about living a good life, being a good person, and getting to that place called the light. Well, you might get to the traffic light, but that's about it. My Bible says in Ephesians 2, 8, 9, it about, talks about that it's by grace through faith. By grace through faith, not of works, not by the things that you do so you can boast about it. It's by grace, by God's grace and your faith in Jesus Christ that we go to heaven. Folks, understand today there is one way. One way. I'm going to tell you, she has a lot of influence. 
You know, she has a, a new TV show that just came out called Belief. Folks, it's influencing people all over the world. It's, it's showing all these different shows from, from, I mean, all these different religions. And it's showing them as if, with that same attitude that we just saw, there can't be just one way. There's just one way. But it's showing all these different things, and folks, it's going to influence people. I pray that it doesn't or hasn't already influenced you. I pray that the world hasn't influenced you. I pray that Satan hasn't influenced you into believing that wrong is right and right is wrong and that there's more than one way to heaven. There's only one. There's only one that can fill the void in the, in the human heart. Only one that can fill that void, and that's Jesus. There's only one who, who came down from heaven, lived on earth, lived a sinless life, le allowed himself to be crucified on the cross, gave up the Spirit, shed his blood for you and I, was buried in the grave, and rose from the dead. Now, how many of those other people that, that we want to count as all these false prophets that are out there, how many of them came back up out of the grave? Zero. There's only one that proved he truly was God's son. There's only one that rose from the grave and showed he had power over the grave, and then he ascended into heaven, and he sits at the right hand of the Father today. Jesus is the only way. Now, you can sit and say nothing there. Are you sure about all that? Yeah, I'm sure of it because I didn't say it. He said it. In John 14, 6, it's right there on the screen. It's red. If you've got a red-letter Bible, it's red in your Bible. It's red because Jesus said it. These are Jesus' words. It says, Jesus said to them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Now get this. No one comes to the Father but through me. No one comes to the Father but through me. This is Jesus saying that. Jesus said, no one comes to the Father but through me. Now what about all these people out there? They said there must be more than, than one way to heaven. Jesus said, no one comes to the Father but through me. We said Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says it's not of works. So it's not Jesus plus all these good things. It's just Jesus. It's not about anything else but Jesus. Jesus is the only way a person goes to heaven. There's one way, and Jesus is it. Now, this verse, and the way, the truth, and the life, no one comes to the Father but by me, is, is probably one of the most important verses in the Bible. Now, people don't know the address for it. They don't know the numbers for it like they do John 3, 16. But today, I hope you all say, say John 14, 6. Man, that was weak. Turn the air down, Jeremy. No, <laughs> John 14, 6. Say it again. John 14, 6. Say Jesus. Say Jesus again. There's just something about it. Jesus. Jesus is the only way. Say that with me. Jesus is the only way. Now say Jesus is Lord. Let me ask you something. Do you really mean that when you say Jesus is Lord? I want to be really, really clear and, and really, really plain and a very simple message today. You say Jesus is Lord sitting in the church house on Sunday morning with a group of people around because that's what everybody else was saying. But today I want to ask you, is Jesus truly Lord of your life? You see, when we say Jesus is the only way to heaven, understand there's only two ways when it comes to eternity. You're either going to heaven or you're going to hell. There's heaven and there's hell. And the only way that you're going to heaven is through Jesus, through believing in him. Through admitting that you're a sinner and believing that Jesus was God's son and he came down from the heaven, he lived a sinless life, he walked here on earth, he lived his life for you and I, and he who knew no sin went up on the cross for us, all the time having the power to, to call down a, a band of angels to, to, to defeat those who would put him on the cross, but he stayed there because that was God's plan. The Bible says that there is no remission of sin. There's no payment for sin without the shedding of blood. So Jesus knew that he had to stay on that cross. He had to shed his blood. He had to die. He gave up his spirit for us. He took the sin of the whole world for each and every one of you. And then when his body had died, 
After he had given up the ghost, they, they took his body and they, they buried him in a borrowed tomb. Oh, but that third day, he wasn't there. Jesus rose from the grave and, and people saw him. They saw the nail-scarred hands. They saw the, the, the holes in his body. They saw where he had shed his blood. He was, but he was alive. He wasn't dead. And it's because of what he did there that Jesus is the only way to heaven. People tried and tried over and over in the, in the Old Testament to, to, to find a way to, to please God, to be right with God, to try and keep the law. Folks, it doesn't matter how hard you try, none of us are good enough. Again, we go back, it's, it's by faith through grace, not of works, not of ourselves. And there's some folks in here that, that have known me for a long time. There's some folks in here that knew me when I wasn't a Christian. And if you'd have told some of those folks 20 years ago that I might be standing up in front of the church delivering God's message one Sunday, they'd have laughed you under the table. Understand today the only thing that allows me to stand up here is the blood of Jesus. The only thing that allows me, my only one way to heaven one day when God calls me home, is Jesus. And that same Jesus that's available for me and, and has allowed me to become a new creation, I'm a work in progress, my wife will vouch for that part. Amen. <laughs> but I'm a born again sinner saved by grace. That same grace is available to you today. Now understand, we said there are two destinations. There is, there is heaven and there's hell. The Bible says there is none righteous, not one. There is nobody. There is, right out here in the middle between those two is a big old gap, and that gap's called sin. The Bible says that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. All of us are sinners, and, and you know what? Because of that sin, God can't have anything to do with us because God doesn't have anything to do with sin, so we're stuck over here. Guess what? Our ticket to hell is already taken care of. There's one way to hell, and that's sin. There's one way to hell, and that's sin and refusing Jesus. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. So the payment for our sin over here is, is hell. It's to that place where the, where the worm doth not, where there's na wailing and gnashing of teeth. You thought it was hot in here last Sunday? You keep saying no to Jesus. God loves you, and, and, and he made a way. And there's only one way. It's not about being good. Do you see, it's, it's when we accept Jesus and Jesus becomes Lord of our life that, that then that we want to live for him and, and begin to be a new person. And the Bible says that we're a new creation and that we're no longer bound to sin. I want to get, again, it's a simple message today, but I want to make sure that everybody that understands today there is one way. Now, I don't want to take this, this message out of... Uh, Context. So if we were to, to back up to, to chapter 13, we'd know the, the apostles are, are, are in the, the upper room. They're, they're there to, with Jesus to celebrate the, the Passover. He's, he's washed feet. He's spending time with them there. Uh, he's pointed to, to Judas, Judas as the betrayer. Uh, he's, he's pointed out that, that Peter will, will deny him. All this stuff has, has gone on, and in, in 13, they're the Apostles that are still there with Jesus, they're, they're probably nervous. They're wondering what's going to happen. What's all this, this leading to? And, and I love how Jesus starts out in John 14, 1. He said, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Let not your hearts be troubled. Jesus was telling them that you can have peace. You can have a peace that passes all understanding. Now understand, this is a, a message and no scriptures are fresh in my mind because I, I use them in probably every funeral I've ever done. But folks, understand that these words are not just for the dead. They're for the living. Let not your hearts be troubled. You know what? You're going through life today. You're having a tough time. You can't understand why things just won't come together. Your heart hurts. There's a void there. There's something mentioned. Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. That's Jesus saying that. Believe in him today if you want a, a peace that passes all understanding. He goes on in verse 2 to say, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and and receive you to myself, that where I am, you, that you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. 
Thomas said, Lord, we did not know where you were going, and how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. So, the question, is Jesus the only way to salvation? Is Jesus the only way to heaven? Yes. Jesus said it. Jesus said, no man comes to the Father except through me. Make sure you understand that today. Make sure you know that. Make sure that you believe it. If you want some supporting scripture, it's all throughout the Bible. Acts 4.12 says, this is Peter speaking of Jesus, and there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. And in case you drifted for a second, and it's not on the screen. And guys, I intentionally gave just one slide today because I knew Mr. Tom wasn't here and, and he would mess it all up. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Mr. Tom's sick, so y'all pray for Mr. Tom. But I made it easy on Justin, just one slide. I want, I want to make sure that, that y'all are seeing that over and over and over today. I don't want you to miss out on, on seeing. Those are the, the, the words of Jesus there. But understand that Peter said, talking about Jesus, there is no salvation. There is salvation in no one else for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. It's the name of Jesus. Jesus is the only way. There's one way. John 5, 12 says, whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son does not have life. Pretty simple. I told you it was a simple message. Whoever has the Son has life. If you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, then you have life. You have an abundant life here and now. You can have that peace. When Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled, you believe in God, believe also in me, you can experience that life that he's talking about right there. Whoever has the Son has life, and whoever doesn't have the Son does not have life. If you don't have Jesus today, understand, you're not going to have a happy life here. Now, you may have some good times, but you're not going to have a life filled with peace. You're not going to have a life filled with a comfort. See, you know, you may think you have friends. Let things get hard. You'll find out who your real friends are. But you know what? Even your family will fail you. Folks, even your spouse will fail you. But Jesus is one who sticks closer than a brother. Jesus is one who said he would never leave us. Uh, the, this life is an awesome life here and now, but it's also an eternal life. Can you imagine one day stepping off into eternity, when, whenever it is that, that God calls you home, what it's going to be like? I can't even begin to imagine what it's going to be like to, to, to see Jesus face to face. To breathe in celestial air, to walk streets of gold. What an awesome, awesome thing that's going to be. But again, he said there is... No other name by which we must be saved. Now understand today that when we say there's one way, one thing I, I can tell you for sure about heaven is you think of a religion in your mind right now that doesn't have anything to do with Jesus and, and doesn't say that Jesus is the only way, guess what? All those followers, they're not going to be in heaven. All the the new agers, all the people that want to believe that everything is good and everything is right and, and you don't have to have Jesus to, to get to heaven, guess what? If somebody doesn't tell them and they don't change their heart, they're not going to be in heaven. Those who, who have no belief at all, they're not going to be there either. But see, we don't have to settle for that today because I pray that God is putting people that you know that, that may not know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, I pray that God's putting on that in your heart today and that he's making it real and powerful and fresh in your mind and giving you the boldness to stand up and say that Jesus said he was the only way. Jesus said no one comes to the Father except through him, and I believe that and I live by that. Folks, if we don't tell these people they're going to go off into eternity without Jesus, and we done said without Jesus, they're not going to heaven. And as much and as many pastors stand in the pulpit today that won't talk about the other, without Jesus, they're going to hell. And that hurts. I have loved ones, I have friends that I know don't, don't know Jesus. And I know that you do too, and today I pray that God puts them on your heart and gives you a burden to tell them there's only one way. 
There's only one way that we can truly be a, a great commission church. In Matthew 28, the Bible says to go ye therefore and teach all nations. We're supposed to be telling everybody. So understand, it's not just about being here on, on Sunday morning. Maybe you're a member of, a, of one of the lift groups. Oh, you're one of them that comes on Wednesday nights. It's more than that, folks. Because if we don't tell them about Jesus, they're going to die one day and they're going to go to hell. Tell them through your actions. Tell them through the, the, the life that you live. Let them see change in you. And when God sets it up, you tell them that Jesus is what makes the difference in your life. Jesus is the reason for the smile on your face. Y'all smile this morning. Y'all know Christians ought to smile. We're the only ones going to go to heaven one day. And I'm going to tell you, that's pretty exciting knowing one day I get to go to heaven. Where Miss Pat go? Where you at? I can't find Miss Pat. Is she still here? There she is. Miss Pat, there's not going to be any more cancer in heaven. Praise God for that. Praise God for that. There's not going to be any more sickness, no more hurting, no more pain. Praise God for that. We ought to walk about, not like other people do, but walk about with a smile on our face. Nobody wants to go up to a grumpy person and, hey, tell me about that Jesus. No, that ain't going to talk to you. Folks ought to enjoy being around you. You ought to be the, the light in the room. God said you ought to be the light of the world. Again, 1 John 5, 12 said, Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son does not have life. And remember what Jesus said. Jesus said, I am the life. Understand that, that Jesus is, is talking about life. A life that equates to there's life and there's death. There's life here on earth with peace and happiness. And then there's a death that comes, a physical death that comes. But he's also talking about life in eternity. Life spent there in heaven. He said, I go to prepare a, a, a place for you. He said, in my Father's house are, are many mansions. I'm going to tell you, I don't, I don't have a, a big house. Because if I had one more room to mess up, it would be tough on Tanya. <laughs> Plus, I can't afford a bigger house, but I'm so thankful for the house I have today because you know what? I know that it's all temporary. I know that none of that matters. I know that my Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. He said that in my Father's house are many mansions. You know what? I'm going to get one of them one day. Not because of the job that I did here or anything I did here on earth except saying yes to Jesus. Yes to Jesus. The believer inherits those heavenly mansions by saying yes to Jesus. Folks, y'all smile again. One day we're going to get a mansion. If I could sing right now, I'd sing that song about a mansion over the hilltop, but I'm not going to sing it. No. They'd figure out a way to cut my mic off then. Understand that, that Jesus is the way. The way. Now, when we say way, understand that, that Jesus is the way that we, we get to that. Jesus is the, the path. He's the, the only way that you get there. Jesus is the truth. He is the only real truth that there is in the whole world. You know, if we, if we look back and, and we see that uh, actually right after Jesus had, had said these things there in the, in the upper room, he was with Pilate, and Pilate said to him, so, so you're a king? And Jesus answered, and I'll read it here. You say that I'm a king for this purpose I was born. And for this purpose I have come into the world to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. He basically told Pilate there that, that he was the, the truth. And folks, understand today that the truth is that without, without Jesus, all these people that want to say that there's more than, than one way, they're wrong. Without Jesus, you're bound for hell. The truth is that Jesus said he's the only way that a person comes to the Father. And then we go on, and, and Thomas we see that Thomas wanted to, to know where, where Jesus was going, and, and Jesus said he was going to his father's house to, to prepare a place. And we've talked a little bit about that, but 
it was as if Thomas just really didn't understand. And I wonder today, maybe you're here, do you, do you really not understand when he said, I'm the, the way? We know what he means by the truth. We've talked about the life. But when he said that, I'm the way, it's like Thomas didn't really understand. Jesus, I, we don't know where you're going. Well, the Bible talks about the way a lot. It says, uh, walk in thy ways, uh, the way of the Lord, the way which the Lord commanded, the path of righteousness, the, the path of life. Isaiah 35, verses 8 through 10 say, a highway shall be there. A highway shall be there and a road, and it shall be called the highway of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for others. Whoever walks the road, although a fool, shall not go astray. No lion shall, shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast go upon it. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there, and the ransomed of the Lord shall return. And come to Zion with their singing, with everlasting joy on their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Folks, there is going to time where I, going to be a time where I am going to sing. I'm going to sing, "Hallelujah, worthy is the Lamb." Those verses talk about the the Redeemer and the ransom. Understand today, there's only one Redeemer in all of the Bible. There's only one Redeemer in all of the world, and that was Jesus Christ. Because Jesus was the only one that could pay the ransom for our sin. Again, Jesus was the perfect lamb without spot. He was the only one that could, could shed his blood. He was the only way that we could get to heaven. Jesus truly was God incarnate. That, that means that he was, he was God in the flesh. The Bible said that the, the word became flesh and, and dwelt among us. Jesus is God. Jesus is God's son, and he came here to earth, and he died for you and I. Today, I, I pray that you're not relying upon some, some silly idea of, of being a, a church member, some silly idea of worshiping a tree, a flower, an animal, or believing that, that some guy who, who told some crazy stuff years ago and died and nobody heard from him again, that any of that's going to get to heaven. I pray that today that you're relying on God's grace to get you to heaven, that you're relying on the gift of life, the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ. John 3, 16, we've all heard that one before. Most everybody here has heard that. For God so loved the world. The world is, is you and I. God loves every one of you. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. That's Jesus. God gave Jesus to the world. God gave Jesus to you and I so that whosoever Whosoever, that's you and I. Anybody, anybody, doesn't matter how bad you are or how good you are, whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. Now, God's got you here today for, for one of two reasons. One, he wanted to remind you that there's only one way so that you might share that with others or maybe you might begin to live your life that way again. Or maybe God's got you here today because there's never been a time in your life that you've truly made Jesus Lord of your life. Maybe you've done like we did a while ago and we all said Jesus is Lord. But if there's never been a time in your life that you believed with all your heart and spoke with your mouth to God and you said, you know what, God? I believe that Jesus was your son. And God, I know that I'm a sinner and I believe Jesus came and died for me. God, I want, you to, I want you to save me today. I want Jesus to, to be Lord of my life. I want to be freed from sin. I want that life filled with peace now. I don't want my heart to be troubled anymore. Jesus, today I commit my life to you. I wonder today if God's got you here today because you need to do that. And not just say those words, but you need to mean them. Understand, God's only going to knock at your door so many times. God's only give you so many opportunities. Today's not guaranteed for anybody. 
I pray for, for no other glory but for the glory of God, that if God's speaking to your heart today and you're not sure about all that, that, that where you stand there or right here at the front, if you need to come down here and, and get things straight away, we'll stay and, and sing all day long. But I pray that if God's speaking to you today and there's some change or, or some decision you need to make today, that for his glory and for your eternity, for your peace now, that you'll answer his call. Would you stand and pray with me?